Hi mates and welcome back to my World of Tanks channel, I'm Antonov2 and today we're going to take a look at the Jagdpan for Tier 7 German Tank Destroyer. This vehicle actually existed, <laughs> it's one of the few vehicles in World of Tanks that did. It was produced from 1944 to 1945 and quite a lot of vehicles were built, 415 in total. And mainly these tanks were actually used on the Eastern Front, but for example at the Battle of the Bulge uh, during the Ardennes Offensive, some of these tanks were deployed on the Western Front as well. And actually, you can use this tank in historical battles. Um, in the Operation Spring Awakening, which takes place against the Russians on the Eastern Front, and then on the Battle of the Bulge, obviously, against the Americans. So that's quite interesting. Yeah, what is the Yak Panther like in general? Well, really, it's a highly manoeuvrable and really deadly tank destroyer, which has not got that much armour but can bounce some shots and has got lots of flexibility for TD. Uh, and really, in my opinion, it's one of the strongest entries tier for tier as a TD in the game. So, um, yeah, let's have a look at its stats. Now, first of all, it gets 850 hit points. That's not a lot. But um, as TDs go, it's actually alright. It's the TD at tier 7, I think, with the most health. Although, maybe the PZSFL 5 has got more. But I don't. I think this is actually the TD at tier 7 with the most health. So that's quite nice. It's quite heavy, actually, weighing 46.49 tonnes. So you can actually ram quite a few tanks, especially medium and light tanks, if you encounter them in close quarters. But I always would be careful with ramming because... You haven't got a turret, and if you get too close to your enemies, that will make it really easy for them to circle you. So, I would only really ram people usually if they are slower than you, or if the ramming will take them out anyway, so that they can't circle you afterwards. Driving these 46.49 tons in my loadout is a 700 horsepower engine, as so out that engine has got quite a lot of grunt, and means that this tank gets a power to weight ratio of 14.66, and a top speed limit of 55. So, yeah, this tank is really manoeuvrable, and you know, you would expect it to be, because it's based on the chassis of the Panther T7 medium tank. And this is definitely one of the most manoeuvrable tank destroyers in the game. Its traverse speed is 32 degrees per second, which is quite good actually. It's like it's not amazing, but as tank destroyers go, it's definitely quite good. Next we'll look at the armor. And well, the armor is actually all right, but it's not amazing. You've got 80 millimeters of armor on the upper glaciers here. So that's all this up here, except for the gun mantlet and the casing around it, which is quite strong actually. I believe this casing here, this outer rim, I guess you could call it, is 150 millimeters strong. And then the gun mantlet itself is obviously quite difficult to penetrate to. So usually you want to stay away from this bit of armor and fire the cheeks or beneath the gun and really most tier 7 tanks will be able to penetrate these armor surfaces quite easily most of the time uh, if you can't penetrate you can always go for this mg port which is weaker or the lower glaciers which is only 50 millimeters strong uh, yeah but the thing is that actually the yak panther can bounce shots quite often because first of all uh, your gun man is actually quite big and um, secondly Many people, I think they auto-aim at you, and if they auto-aim, the reticle just hovers exactly over the gun. And that means that they repeatedly hit your gun mantlet, which in turn means that your gun gets taken out quite often, but you usually don't take any damage from those kind of hits. And also your armor's angled quite well, so that means, especially against lower tier tanks, for um, like tier 6 medium tanks for example, the Yak Panther actually can pull off quite a lot of bounces, but against equally tier tanks and higher tier tanks, really your chances of bouncing are quite slim. Now at the sides we've got 50mm of armour, which is not very much, I mean it's a tank destroyer, you know, you, you don't expect it to have good side and rear armour. Rear is 40mm at the hull, but at this fighting compartment the rear is actually 50mm. Now really um yeah size and rear won't bounce anything but the fact that you've got 50 millimeters is actually quite important because uh, that means that the russian 122 millimeter guns can't overmatch your armor that means you can actually angle your armor about like this in between shots which can really increase your chances of bouncing yeah so um next we'll talk about the guns and uh, the guns are actually really interesting in this tank because you get the choice of two and both guns 
are really good in their own way and have got their own strengths and weaknesses. So uh, many guns actually, uh, many people actually don't use the 10.5 centimeter gun, but the 8.8 centimeter gun, which is not the top gun in this tank. So let's compare the two and find out why. So on the left side, we've got the 88 centimeter gun and on the right side, the 105 centimeter gun. Now this is a modification, a tank destroy modification of the top gun of the Tiger 1. And this is a modification of the top gun of the Tiger 2. So probably you would think that this gun is better, but um, maybe that's a bit rushed. So let's quickly have a look at the stats first. Now, first of all, the caliber is quite interesting because the fact that you get 105 millimeters of caliber means that you can overmatch 30 millimeter armor surfaces while you can't do that with the 88 millimeter gun the rate of fire obviously is quite a bit worse on the 105 millimeter gun uh it's 9.84 which is amazing on the 88 while it's only 7.32 so that's really 2.5 shots less in the minute which is quite severe drawback in rate of fire really now the penetration is slightly better on the 8.8 centimeter gun i mean the difference really is negligible it's 200 and 203 both of them are really good and absolutely sufficient at tier 7 and even at tier 8 yeah but still the 88 millimeter gun gets a little bit more penetration however with a premium ammo the 10.5 centimeter gun is better and another very interesting thing is that actually you get a lot more HE penetration with the 105. Usually uh, it's not really very likely that you'll be firing HE at any targets with 8.8 .8. but actually with the 105 millimeter you can really hurt lightly other targets with HE with the 105 millimeter gun. Uh, the alpha damage is quite a lot worse on the 8.8, .8. it's 240 rather than 320, so that's an 80 hit point difference, and that's really a big difference, and 320 is really good alpha damage at tier 7, for example the T29 also gets that amount of alpha damage, so that's really good. The accuracy again is better on the 8.8, 3.2 rather than 3.4. But really, both these accuracy values are really good and amazing sniper accuracy. For me, sniping accuracy ends at 3.5, but 3.4 for me still is sufficient for sniping. And 3.2, you know, is absolutely amazing. But now comes the main deciding factor in these two guns, really, for me, in the question of which is the better gun, which is the aiming time. Because it's 2.3 seconds on the 8.8 .8 centimeter and 1.7 seconds on the 10.5. And for me, aiming time is one of the most important things on tank destroyers because the fact that you haven't got a turret means that you have to turn your hull quite often to re-engage enemies that have moved, maybe. And uh, that means that your aiming circle will disperse a lot when you move your hull. And in that case, aiming time is just really important. And 1.7 seconds is just so nice to have. So I really like this aiming time. And for me, that's the reason why I prefer the 105mm gun. Because really, the DPM difference is not that big. The alpha damage is really nice. Fair enough rate of fire penetration and accuracy are slightly worse but i mean the differences in penetration and accuracy are really negligible but the aiming time is way better and 2.3 seconds on a tank destroyer is it's all right i mean it's not re it's not bad don't get me wrong but 1.7 is just so good that uh, really in my opinion you have to take for 105 but the main reason really why lots of people decide not to take the 105 but for 8.8 .8, is that the ammo cost of a 105mm gun is just horrendously expensive. One shot costs you 1,030 credits, and at tier 7, that's really a lot. So really, you have to make every shot count to run a profit, especially if you're not running a premium account. And, and with an 8.8cm .8 gun, the shots only cost about 200 credits. I think it's just above 200 credits each shell. So the 105mm shells cost five times as much as the 8.8 .8 centimeter shells and especially if you're not running a premium account then you might want to use the 8.8 .8 and not the 10.5 but really yeah it's kind of up to you both guns are a viable choice it kind of also depends on the tactic that you want to use if you use the 8.8 .8, this tank is a really designated sniper and you can't use it for much else but with a 10.5 you can also kind of get into some brawling situations so in my opinion sniping gameplay is quite boring sometimes and that's another reason why i prefer the 105 over the 8.8 .8. but as i said the choice is really yours you decide 
so yeah, let's have a look at the rest of the stats that we've got left. The gun traverses at 26 degrees per second, which is quite good actually, but you know, the gun traverse is not really a very important statistic. So more importantly, the gun arc is 13 degrees in each direction. Now that's not that much really, I mean it's alright, but it could be better. The gun depression is 8 degrees, so that's actually really good for a German tank destroyer. 8 degrees is, yeah, that's really nice, I mean that's really good gun depression and that gives you some really good flexibility in this tank. You also get 370 meters view range which is average at tier 7 and allows you to do some good spotting for yourself maybe if you're the last one on your team surviving maybe. Yeah then you get 710 meter signal range which is nice. It's not the best at tier 7 but it's still absolutely sufficient. So um, yeah that was kind of it concerning the um, statistics of this tank. I just want to take a quick look at the research tree to give you some advice about what modules to research first because the research tree is quite large in this vehicle. Now usually um, the Fug 7 should carry over from the Jagdpanzer 4 and sometimes you will already have a Fug 12 research from other German tank lines. So if you've got that mount any of those radios straight away. After that, you should research for 8.8cm .8 pack and mount it. You can do that without upgrading the suspension. However, you cannot mount the uh, top engine and the 88cm gun with the stock suspension. So you really need to go for the 8.8cm .8 gun because it's really important because the tier 7 8.8cm .8 gun that you use on the Jagdpanzer 4 lacks penetration and the 75mm gun that you get on the Stug lacks alpha damage and the 8.8 .8 is just good in both categories. So that's why you want to have this gun here researched as soon as possible. And um, after that you should upgrade the suspension and then go for the top engine. And uh, yeah after that uh, if you haven't got the Fug 12 researched yet go for that. And after that you can choose whether you want to get the Jagdpanzer 2 or the Ferdinand. Now, I personally am going to get the Jagdpanzer 2 probably after this tank because I just prefer the added flexibility of the Jagdpanzer over the armor of the Ferdinand. But yeah, that's topic of another review coming up soon. So, um, what equipment do you want to mount on the Jagdpanzer? Well, I went for vents, the gun rammer, and the camo net. And uh, nicely, all these three pieces of equipment are quite cheaper actually on this vehicle. You definitely want to have the vents and the gun rammer, but you could swap camo net for binox. Really, that's your choice, but in my opinion, camo net is quite important in this tank. Because, especially if you come from playing the Jagdpanzer 4 and are used to amazing camo values, with the Jagdpanzer, the camo values kind of drop a bit. I mean, they're still alright, but they're not near as good as they were on the, Jagdpan uh, on the Jagdpanzer 4. And that's why, in my opinion, camo net is the better choice. Especially because you're usually going to rely on your teammates to do the spotting for you. But, I, I mean, if you want to, feel free to mount Binox. Any of the two is alright. If you decide to use the 8.8cm .8 gun, however, rather than the 105 you probably rather want to mount the GLD than Camonet or Binox. For your crew skills, I went for repairs on the entire crew because getting trapped in a tank destroyer is always a real issue because you can get out flank really easily then. But it's really always it's always a real throw up whether you want to have camouflage or repairs on your t tank destroyers and for me the Jagdpan for the 10.5 centimeter gun probably repairs is better because I use this tank a lot more aggressively with a 1.5 but uh, with the 8.8 centimeter maybe camo would be the better choice anyway I would always recommend once um, your first set of skills reaches 100% to swap that for brothers in arms after that train whatever your first set was again repairs a camouflage and then get six cents on your commander and then for your gunner I would probably get armor up because the gun tends to get knocked out quite often on the Jagdpanzer or dead out it depends on yeah your personal taste really then for your driver if you use the 8.8 .8 centimeter gun maybe you would want to get smooth ride because that will really enhance your aiming time after you've turn your tank but really there's no question about it on a tank destroyer you always want to have clutch braking to make it more difficult to for enemies to outflank you and then for your radio operator I mean really on any tank you want to have situational awareness on your radio operator and then for the loader 
you don't really want to have adrenaline rush because you're in the tank story and your hit points are low anyway. So probably safe storage would be a good choice. And then after that, you can maybe uh, have repairs or camouflage depending on what your first set of skills was uh, as a fourth set of skill. Yep, so uh, that was kind of it concerning the Yak Panther in the garage. I've got quite a few cool games end up for you guys, so let's head right in and see what they're about. So this is the first thing I want to show you in the Yak Panther. I'm using the 10.5cm gun and I've spawned in a tier 8 match on Siegfried Line. Now, um, yeah, tier 8 matches are no problem really usually for the Yak Panther with any of the two top guns because the penetration is more than enough to slice through the tier 8 tank's armor if you know where to aim. Now I've headed out for the zero line on this map, which I often like to do in my uh, in my tank destroyers, because then because there's kind of this open alleyway here where you can't get out flanked all that often. So right there you can see the great alpha damage of the 10.5 centimeter gun, allowing me to do lots of damage to that Hellcat. That's really the kind of situation in which you really want to have the 10.5, not the 8.8. .8 because um, like with 8.8 .8, I wouldn't have been able to get two shots off in that situation even though it reloads faster than this gun and that means that I would have done a lot less damage on average so oh hello Mr. T25 slash 2 and bye bye Mr. T25 slash 2 so that's my first kill there on the tier 7 American tank destroyer can we get shots of that Hellcat? oh he's, he's coming out yeah, there he is. Oh, yes. Nice. That's really where the nice 1.7 second aiming time comes into play. Now, something big is firing at me. I think that's that T28 prototype there. Oh, his gun's looking the other way. I, I'm not sure. But something big just hit me there, doing 400 damage. Nearly. I get the side of his turret. Can I get him again? Uh, the Tiger one finished him off. I could secure the kill. So yeah, uh, the score is 5 to 1, so it looks like we're handling this game quite well. I'm going to be quite aggressive now because really we're just advancing through the town. You can see this entire line of our team's tanks just <laughs> rolling towards the enemy. So yeah, the game's looking quite good actually. And oh, there's the enemy T25-2. He's looking for totally the other way. So can we get the kill before this Yak Panther gets it? Oh, come on. Uh, not Yak Pan, Yak Pan's a four, sorry. Oh, what a shame. Well, you know, never mind. So, there, can we hit that T34? Kind of tricky. But yeah, there we go. You can see our gun has got no problem slicing through his armor. I mean, his armor is not fixed in the border, but you know, still. And there we go, third kill, very nice. You can see, although the alpha damage is significantly higher than on the 8.8 centimeter gun, the rate of fire actually is not too bad in this. 10.5 centimeter. Okay, this nice shot through the side of a T28 prototype. And he retreats to cover. Oh, he's poking again? Yes! Fourth kill! <laughs> Good. So, really, this game's in the bag now. We can't really lose it anymore unless we play like absolute donkeys. Haven't really got a very good shot at that T32. But it I think that, did that on penetrate? Yeah, it looked like it. I, that, I think that was through the upper glaciers of a T-32. So that was really lucky there. Because usually in a tier 7 tank, you haven't got much of a chance penning for upper glaciers of a T-32. You have to go for the lower plate. Yeah, so... You can see I'm kind of being left behind a lot, uh, quite a bit here, but... Because this tank is so maneuverable, as it's based on the chassis of a panther, uh, that means that you can really, you know advance very quickly to where you need it uh, in an end game situation for example and that's something that other tank destroyers maybe can't do oh yeah this is where we want to be mr super pershing okay he's turning around really that wasn't very good play I sh my first shot should have gone into his tracks there really and yeah that wasn't a very good shot either so Really, that was quite stupid what I did there. Um, I should have tracked him first. But um, luckily, my team just really <laughs> wrecked that guy before he had the chance to do any damage to me. So can we hit this M6? Seriously? Did we just track him? Oh, my days. The RNG in this game. 
Okay, so yeah, four kills. I mean, that game was just a rant, really. The enemy team didn't stand a chance. But, you know, still, um, we had a big input in that game, I felt, and um, really contributed to advancing on the right flank. So, yeah, that was the first game, but I've still got two other games set up for you guys, so stay tuned, and I'll see you in a second. So, maybe you were thinking it's all, you know, good and well in a tier 8 game, but what about a tier 9 matchup? And yeah, the Yak Panther can really look after itself, even in a tier 9 game. Especially with a 105mm gun, I think, because uh, really, if you're firing at tier 9 tanks with 240 average alpha damage, then usually you won't be hurting them all that much. But with the 300, uh, with the 320 of the 105, it's a totally different story. And you can see the accuracy is really enough, even on the 105, to really hit that E50 there from over 500 meters range. Haven't got a shot at that M103. And yeah, this is basically just how most games play out on Muravanka. If you go for the forest, you know, you just sit there camping and camping and camping. But really, the Yak Panther is really good at camping because, um, yeah, that's just that's just how you play the Yak Panther, you know. And there's the M103 again. Yeah, finally we get a shot into him. And oh, there's an AMX. Okay. Let's see if we can hit you. Come on. No, doesn't look very good. Hmm. Yeah, the game's awfully slow paced, I'm sorry for that. That was actually quite stupid of me, driving down that tree there. Artie may know where I am. So let's see what support we've got here. We've got Centurion, Panther, Rheinmetall. So we haven't actually got any tier 9 tanks in this tank. Actually, this flank here is not defended very strongly. Now, I'm being a bit more aggressive here, but really, we have to defend because we can't afford to advance to the enemies here. Because, like, probably, I, I would expect the Fosh to be over here. I would expect the T28 prototype to be here. And really, I would expect one of the E50Ms to be here. I mean, I know that the other E50M is over uh, at, the, at their spawn point, but... One of the E50Ms, I would say, is over here. Permission to engage. So, that's that AMX 1375 again. And, uh, seriously, did I bounce off that AMX 1375? Oh, oh my, what is that? What is that? Okay, I get a kill, but wait, wait. What's happening here? There's a canal... <laughs> Oh my gosh. I mean, luckily there's this kind of undulation there that's kind of protecting me from fire. Um, I've got into sniper mode now. And let's see if we can take this guy out. Yeah, good. Okay, <laughs> one hit point. That was maybe a bit of a kill steal. But, you yeah, know, it was really important to take that down, guy down. And it was important to take him down fast because he was really lighting us up. So I get two kills though, which is nice. Although, I mean, one of them really was a kill steal. Fire shot that T54E1. And yeah, we managed to. It looks like he's AFK, I think. Oh, yeah. So that's really not very good news for the enemy team, but one of their best tanks is just, you know, being absolutely wrecked by us. And yeah, I get my third kill. Great. I don't know who spotted that guy, but spotting that person was. Um, that player there was really good. Maybe his world's tanks crashed and he was just about to come back online, but then he found a burning wreck where his tank used to be. I'm not sure. So, yeah, it's looking really good for our team again. The score is 8 to 1. And, 
Oh yeah, just as I said, there's the E50M and the Fox. Get one shot for low glazes for E50M. He retreats. Can we hit that Fox? Oh yeah, he's got a side to us. <laughs> Great. Now, this is an 8.11 replay. So the Fox's armor has already been nerfed, but in really 40 or 50 millimeters, who cares, you know? Uh, I can penetrate him anyway. So, I'm just firing a few blind shots at the last known position of that Comet. And there, it doesn't look like I hit him. Maybe I hit him, but it didn't penetrate him, but that's quite unlikely, really. And he's poking. And yeah, there's the prototype as well. So we know where all the enemies are right now. So we just have to clean them up, really. And I don't know why, but some people are capping, although maybe they're just on their way over here through the cap circle, I'm not sure. And yeah, this game is an even worse rant than the last one was. I mean, the score's 13 to 3. So, uh, shake off the E50 or the Comet? No, it looks like that T54 has got quite a good handle on the Comet, but you know what? Let's see if I can just pull off a kill steal here. Oh, yes! <laughs> kill steal alert. <laughs> okay, sorry, T54, bro. <laughs> I mean, okay, I will say that that game had quite a lot of kill stealing in it. Although. I got two honourable kills as well on the AMX 1375 and the <laughs> T54E1. So, uh, yeah, um, that shows that even against tier 9 tanks, you can really uh, yeah, play quite effectively in the Yak Panther, but really, uh, you have to play more defensively in a tier 9 game and let your allies kind of go forwards and uh, you know, do, like, um, push for first line of attack and then basically you just stay behind them and support them with sniping fire. So yeah, let's take a quick look at the post-game stats of that game. So here are the results of that game. We managed to pick up 116,169 credits and 3,550 experience. But I think that was some kind of special going on though with the credits because I can't believe that number was just like the raw credits we earned in that game. We also picked up enough experience to get us our first class mastery badge, which is nice. In the team score, we can see that we came second after the T54, who got 1094 experience. We got 1076 base experience. And also, I think we got this, yeah, we got the second highest damage on the team and the most kills. In the detailed report, we can see we fired 19 shots, of which 14 hit and 12 penned, allowing us to do 3,112 damage. We didn't receive any hits, which is really nice. And really, you shouldn't be taking any hits in the Yak Panther. Um, we, according to that, we also didn't get any potential damage. We damaged 9 enemies, destroyed 4, and also picked up 123 spotting damage. So that's nice. Uh, yeah, and right here you can see the really high shell cost. Uh, we had to pay 19,570 credits for our shells. So let's just quickly remember that number. That's say 20,000 credits. Okay, let's remember that number. And let's now have a game in the 88mm gun and then compare those numbers. So let's head out. So this is the last game I'm going to show you today. And actually, ironically, this is probably one of the first games that I've ever played in my Yak Panther at the time. And uh, this is a confrontation game on several gores. And, uh, yeah, I'm heading out for this, uh, yeah, this kind of hill here on the left flank where I hope to do some sniping. Now, um, this is the version of Several Gorsk before patch 9.0 where it was strongly modified. So you can see the bases are still, like, kind of not there where the spawn points are and, you know, stuff like that. So, this map has changed a lot. So, if you're watching this at a later point, you know, uh, just don't be too astonished by um, how the map looks like today and how it looked back then. So, um, you can see from this position here, you can really get quite a few good shots at enemies trying to pass along there. This KV-1S here is going to be our first customer of the day. 
So, and this is really the kind of situation in which you really want to be using the 88 centimeter gun. I fired a blind shot there, don't think that one hit probably. Um, yeah, I was saying you really want to be using the 88 centimeter gun in this kind of situation because uh, these kind of really long range engagements, the 0.2 accuracy difference really makes a difference. <laughs> Um, I get a nice shot into the IS there, and hopefully you can really see the difference in aiming time to the 10.5 centimeter. Can we get shots of that KV-1S? No, he's behind that building. But you can see that our really good gun depression of 8 degrees in the Yak Panther really allows us to uh, get shots quite far down into this valley here. So. At this point, I realized that there are quite a lot of enemies on my left flank, and I have to be careful. But at the same time, I really want to be engaging those enemies that are progressing through that, um, yeah, kind of dried out creek or riverbed in the center. But I decide that my top prior priority should be to um, stop these guys here from flanking me. So, right there, you can see. The decent alpha damage of this gun, I mean, it's not as good as the alpha damage of the other gun. But combined with a great rate of fire, it's um, it can really hurt enemies. And you know, I had a really good time playing this tank with the 88 centimeter gun as well. So both guns are really viable choices. So I'm advancing because I hope to get better shots of these guys from this position here. Can't hit that SU. Doesn't seem like I can hit any of those guys there. I'm getting quite frustrated here because I really feel like I have to help out my guys in the center of the map, but um, I just can't get any clean shots of those uh, enemies there. So right now I'm in quite a tricky situation here. Uh, I decide to prioritize the, or actually I decide to um, to go round because I do not want to get kind of. Uh, one of those tanks, enemy tanks on each side of me. I'm. Oh, there's the T150 coming round. So I go to aim at the T34, take a shot at him. Advance. Take another shot. This is the great wrath of this gun. And I set him on fire, getting my first kill, okay? So right here, you can see the great maneuverability. This is the great advantage of the Yak Panther. I'm easily able to outplay that T150. Thanks to my good maneuverability. He bounces. Shows my good armor. Or not good, but decent armor. Oh, I got a decent armor. And then I'm able to take him up. So, even though that right there was not really the kind of typical environment for the 8.8 centimeter gun, because really you want to be using this gun more in sniping situations, and probably I would have performed better in that situation with the 10.5 centimeter gun, still, um, it showed that you can sometimes decide. Uh, decide close range engagements to a good outcome for you, even with the 8.8 centimeter gun. So yeah, now this is more like it. Hello, Mr. KV1S. <laughs> okay, so third kill, but I'm not done yet. Come on, can I please get some shots? Oh yeah, but he's aiming at me. Okay, so I have to get into cover here. Oh, too late. Okay, that guy got a really meaty hit into me. But, oh, that's looking good. Yes. Nice. But I realized that probably that KV-1-3 is going to poke against me again to try to take me out. So I'm going to retreat now. And sure enough, there's the KV-3 trying to get some shots at me. But I think he's le I've left his field of vision now. So I'm going up the undulation. And, oh, no, it looks like he can't hit me, actually, because he's retreating. Probably can't see me. 222 damage on the IS there. I miss. Going for this IS because there's more of him showing. But he retreats to cover, making me miss my shot ago again. So I'm going to go for the KV-3 again now. Nice shot at him there. He retreats. And, oh my days, there's an IS behind me. Okay. But at least there's a PZ SFL5 with me here. So he gets a nice shot to the IS before he goes down. But I know that the IS has to reload for, say, 10 seconds now. 
But really, uh, I've kind of missed my chance to push for engagement now. So I just have to wait for him to come round. And I fire a blind shot there, but I realize that realistically engaging that IS front on, I don't stand much of a chance. So I decide to run for it. And right here, I'm in quite good cover from the IS. So, uh, I actually wanted to drive down that cliff there, but then I realized, oh, the IS is on quite low health. I load APCR ammunition because I really want to win this engagement against the IS. And frankly, sometimes the IS can be quite tough not to crack, even with the 88cm gun. I've got an E25 supporting me here, so this is good news. And really, okay, I wouldn't have needed an APCR shell right here. Okay, I, I don't get the kill anyway. So there's one IS left in the game. Scores 14 to 8. So let's see if we can get him. So I realise that I'm probably not going to be the first one to engage that IS. So I think, I, yeah, I decide just to stay back here and prepare to snipe him when he gets spotted. Because that's probably my best chance at the moment. And sure enough, there he is. Aim, aim, and fire. Good. So he's moving now. And great, that just shows the great DPM of this gun. Usually in the 10.5, you probably would have, wouldn't have been able to take him out. Because a first shot would have done more damage, but he probably wouldn't have been able to reload in time before, say, the Yak Pan, the other Yak Pan that took him out. But with the 8.8 centimeter gun, we were able to really use a good Roth to easily take down that enemy IS, getting our fourth kill. So yeah, that was one of the first games of my Yak Panther, and probably uh one of my best if not the best in the yak panther so um yeah let's have a look at the post game stats to see how good exactly it was uh, you know it just occurred to me that i always use the same transitions don't i so i always say let's see how good that game was exactly or something like that and always when i want to look at the post game stats so <laughs> maybe that's something i should change because i say about every video i think anyway uh this game was actually quite good that we got 54,030 credits and 3,678 experience. Our ace tanker badge. I was really glad to pick this ace tanker badge up in my third game for Yak Panther or so. And a high caliber medal. In the team score, we can see we were best by far getting 1,226 experience and picking up 3,326 damage and 4 kills. In the detailed report, we can see that we fired 21 shots, which 16 hit and 15 penned. So that shows the good penetration of this gun. But actually, the hit and uh, the shot to hit ratio is not that good, really. Uh, we dealt out 3,326 damage, which is quite a lot. Uh, we received 5 hits, of which 3 penned and 2 didn't. And also, we received 1,230 potential damage. Yeah, so that kind of shows. That the armor is you shouldn't rely on your armor in the Yak Panther, but it can bounce shots in some situations. Uh, we detected two enemies, damaged nine, which is quite a lot, and destroyed four, and also picked up nearly 1,000 spotting damage. Now, here's the interesting thing we fired 21 shots, we dealt out 300, uh, 3,326 damage. If we look at this game on Muravank that we had before in the 10.5 centimeter gun, we can see that that's only 200 damage more than uh, in the game before that. So for 200 damage more, we had to pay 5,292 for ammo resupply. Well, in this game here, we had to pay nearly 20,000. So that just shows how much money it costs to run the 105 millimeter gun in comparison to the 88 and really um if you're kind of running this tank in a budget say about a premium account probably the 8.8 centimeter gun is the one you want to be using and um yeah really the 8.8 centimeter gun is a really viable option and yeah you know you can't really have great games that i definitely had
So, yeah, that was kind of it concerning the Jagd Panther. For me, the Jagd Panther is definitely one of the best tank destroyers tier 40 in the game. Just the fact that you can adapt it to the playstyle you prefer by the choice of guns. And even with a 105mm gun, it is really flexible. So, that, so yeah, that means that you can really use it for sniping, you can use it for kind of brawling even, or close range engagement sometimes due to the quick aiming time. And yeah, that's why for me the Yak Tank was a lot of fun to play, I can really recommend this tank. It's definitely a worthy stepping stone on the way to the mighty Yak Panzer E100. And I'm really looking forward to getting the Yak Panther 2, which I'll probably buy today or tomorrow. And um, yeah, I hope you appreciated this review and it contains some good information for you if you did consider giving it a thumbs up below or even subbing to my channel. And I've got another announcement for you, uh, which is that I won't be uploading any videos for a week or so now because I'm going to Prague for a week, um, yeah, kind of for the Easter holidays. And I'll be back after that doing maybe two videos after that at school again. But, uh, yeah, so I'm sorry for that, but no videos for a week now, but I hope I could supply you with enough content in this first week of my Easter vacation to, uh, yeah, kind of, uh, you know, keep the channel running for the time being. Yeah, so thanks for watching. I hope I see you in one of my next videos or maybe even on the battlefield. And, yeah, bye-bye.